Hello and welcome to Edikimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss current affairs for today, 20th of May 2022. Welcome to all the participants who have joined into the live premiere session and welcome to all the other people who have joined later as well. Today's quote. Today's quote says, Healing your wounds will make you an extraordinary leader. Yes. Forgive yourself for the past mistakes you have committed. Forgive other people if they have done something against you. Because this is the kind of burden you would not like to carry on a journey like UPSC examination. To be able to be in the best position to have the right answer tick marked out of the four options in pre-exam, you got to forget the past and forgive the burden that you are carrying around and uh, these wounds must heal. And therefore, for pre-examination sake, for the sake of having the presence of mind and main examination and interview, forgive everything in the past and move ahead, focus on the examination. With this, if you like this initiative, share some love through likes, comments and shares. Let's understand what you're going to discuss today. Today we have quite a few interesting topics. Ethanol blending, quite a, a knowledgeable update on the same. NATO expansion, we will understand what are the issues with Turkey and uh, countries like Sweden and Finland. Sela Tunnel in news from Andhrachal Pradesh. Palm oil from Indonesia again in news. Malcolin Convention, Amritsar Jamnagar Green Corridor to be inaugurated in the year 2023, Navdut Engine, Dual Purpose Engine, Suposhit Mabhyan in Kota and Agro Tourism from Jaipur. We will understand each of this as today's current affairs. The first news is ethanol blending. We discussed a quick update yesterday, but now quite a substantial portion for today's discussion. See, the amendment to national biofuel policy has been made. The amendment has been made to the effect that uh, the targets that we wanted to achieve by 2030, that is to blend 20% of ethanol with petrol, 80% petrol that we have accelerated. And now we want to achieve this target by the year 2025. We will start this blending by the year 2023. This is what the government has said said. See, the government records state that we have as many as 220 million transport vehicles in the country. Transport means the personal carriers and professional carriers. And out of them, 75% of these vehicles are two-wheelers. Around 12% are the four-wheelers and rest of them commercial vehicles or larger vehicles. Now, the point is that all these vehicles can utilize and do utilize petrol as one of the energy sources. And we can also blend petrol with with ethanol. Now the best part about this blending is that it will it will in fact reduce the imports that we have. Last year we imported effectively around 55 billion dollars of import only petrol and if we have 20 percent of blending we might be able to save some four billion dollars. Four billion dollars right now why are you saying four why not 20 percent of 55 billion dollars it is because that while we curtail the import of petroleum we also will have other technologies no hydrogen fuel and uh, battery technologies so a share will go to the blending of fuel we'll be able to save four billion not less around 28 29 thousand crore rupees so this is the first intention of the government there are additional advantages of having ethanol blending the first advantage is that we will be able to utilize our agricultural base we have a huge agricultural base for example sugarcane cultivation, molasses as the product of sugarcane, then we have maize and many other biofuel policy products which can be utilized and uh, utilized for creation of uh, ethanol blended products. Not only that, we have also found that the level of uh, pollution generated through ethanol blended fuel is less. So when ethanol burns completely, it will not produce carbon monoxide. There will be substantial drop in the production of carbon monoxide. However, there, there are certain ill, Ill effects also. For example, uh, while CO, carbon monoxide, won't be produced or would be produced in the least quantity, the, there will be no, no specific drop in the nitrogen and sulfur compounds which are produced as the uh, exhaust gases. So this is an issue. Then we would need more more of ethanol to be able to blend it and have efficiency in fuel. That means if one liter of uh, petrol was providing some energy and efficiency, we would need more amount of ethanol for providing same energy efficiency. Now, another issue is that 
these engines, the combustion engines that we have in the vehicles right now, they are utilizing the present technology of petrol and diesel, right? But then if we have blended fuel, there'll be some level of uh, residual byproduct formed because we have blended the fuel. Now it is not more, uh, pure uh, petroleum, petrol. We will also have ethanol. So it will lead some residue and we will have to change the technology of the engine. So we will need technology of the engine which can have flexi fuel, flexi fuel policy, right? So this is what has been encouraged by Ministry of Transport as well. Now, uh, right now, the cost of uh, uh, production of ethanol in India is not less. It is high because of the fair and remunerative pricing. So the cost is high as compared to developed countries like USA or another developing country like Brazil. Though uh, Those two countries are the leading producers of ethanol, ethanol blending, right? So this is what is to be noted. Now, when we are producing sugarcane, uh, 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 ethanol through sugarcane then we will also have to dedicate more water because sugar is water intensive we will also have to dedicate more land for this because of extensive sugarcane cultivation so this is these are the point of references while we want to reduce the agricultural area this specific product will need more agricultural area right it will also need huge quantity of water one liter of ethanol from sugar requires about 3000 liters of water imagine this all right so the government says we will go ahead with a plan like this right they've already said that the rubber and plastic components of uh, the petrol vehicles should be made uh, compatible with ethanol 20 blending right now they are compatible with ethanol 10 blending the plan is also to blend with ethanol 85 ethanol 100 the vehicles completely running on ethanol right so this is one thing government has also instructed the original equipment manufacturers to go ahead with the flexi fuel engines also marketed the oil marketing companies have been directed to start taking intake of uh, ethanol ethanol uh, sugarcane uh, from the farmers to be able to mix it with petrol now the countries which are uh, doing very well in this technology are us brazil followed by european union china india canada and thailand all right now i wanted to show you people all very quickly the uh, biofuel policy of 2018 see the biofuel policy states that there are four generations of uh, fuel that you can utilize for uh, production of uh, uh, the uh, the biofuels so first generation are crops food crops the second would be residue of the food crops so first generation would be starch sugar oil crops etc the second generation would utilize wood grass hay uh, forest residue uh, industrial waste all those things right the third generation would have algae being cultivated at a mass level and the fourth generation will have genetically modified crops so this is how we want to proceed in our biofuel policy not that we are only favoring uh, sugarcane we will also favor others but to begin with sugarcane is the first target all right NATO expansion in news. It has been in news, but uh, let's understand what is the issue here right now. We'll update on what is happening in Russia and what is happening in Ukraine as well. And what's about NATO? See, the NATO was originally a 12 member country and now it has expanded to 30 members. 30 members. And now proposal is to add two more. One is Sweden and the other one is uh, Finland. So Finland is this particular country and then we have uh, Sweden, both of them willing to join. However, they are conditions to join NATO. The conditions are something like this. They must be functioning democracy. There must be market economy in those economies and they must have protection for minorities in those countries. They must have peaceful ways of solving conflicts. Contribution to NATO operations militarily should be provided and then democratic civil military relations and institutions must, must be set up in those countries. These are the preconditions along with unanimity of all the NATO members, all 30 members must unanimously say that yes, these are the members we want to intake in this group. Now, this membership will entail that anybody, anybody from exterior attacking these nations, all of them will come to rescue. But Turkey has some other plans. Turkey says we will not allow Sweden or uh, uh, Finland to join this uh, organization. Why so? It is so because both these countries have uh, had some level of uh, uh, partnerships, political associations which uh, help the Kurdish movements. Kurdish movements. So, Turkey has wanted extradition of certain people uh, they, whom they call as terrorists, Kurdish terrorists uh, to Turkey to be uh, of course uh, uh, prosecuted. But uh, these countries have not extradited those, uh, those people. In fact, Sweden has also sanctioned Turkey on some grounds. And Turkey happens to be that country which is only second after USA in provision of uh, the uh, NATO 
uh, force. All right. So Turkey has got greater strength. Now uh, there are some additional things to understand. These two countries, they were they had non-partisan membership, right? So they did not participate with the Marshall Plan as well. Marshall Plan was to was a rebuilding plan for Europe after World War Two, and uh, they also had, in fact, Finland also had a treaty of friendship with Russia, with USSR, by which Russia would not attack this particular country. So now they are no more neutral. Earlier, see, earlier the uh, border between uh, the NATO member countries and Russia was 1200 kilometers. And if these countries get added, the border will extend to 1300 more, doubling the border. Now, issue is that if you militarize these border areas, if you see the yellow color, these are the border areas. If you militarize, now, now new members are yellow in color, but then we will also have these two countries colored in yellow, right? So all this border with Russia, Russia will not be happy, especially if you nuclearize this area. So they have already declared we will not nuclearize the area and we might not also have uh, have the NATO forces. But in case somebody attacks, then everybody will come to defense. This is the point. So this is uh, one thing about this. The other thing here is that, um, see, it is not just Russia's border with Norway right here and Russia's border with Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. We also have a small portion of Russia here. I keep on enforcing this because Poland also faces a border with Russia. And how come Poland is directly connected with Belarus only? No, but then no, this is the part. And I would like you to name this uh, particular city, an important city, Leningrad. All right. Now, a quick update of uh, the war here. The war is in a position where uh, Russia is almost gaining complete access to the Donetsk and Luhansk region and creating a complete land bridge. So this is the position. However, um, also, 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 as a revenge to the Moscow, the, the cruiser ship which was drowned by Ukraine, Russia has started to use its submarines and caliber cruise mis missiles and it is wanting to gain some edge over Ukraine. Now, they've lost enormous number of troops, 26,000 troops, 200 fighter jets, jets, thousands of vehicles and uh, equipments and electronics and etc. But then they are also facing some operational difficulties. So there's a river called as River Donets. And to be able to cross it, uh, they are not able to cross it uh, uh, with the help of their uh, devices and that's where they have uh, been cornered and uh, received extensive damage to their uh, supplies. Another news about Mr. Putin, if you are aware, he is uh, going through a form of cancer, advanced stage and he's at a very critical juncture. Let's see what is in future. Okay, Sela Talent and News because the government says that this is the final stage of uh, formation of creation of Sela Tunnel. Where does it exist? It exists in the state of Arunachal Pradesh. What is it going to do? It is going to connect the main uh, areas, the reachable areas of Arunachal Pradesh to uh, the forward areas, Tawang. Tawang, a very important uh, site for India, biodiversity and borders with uh, uh, China. So very important area and it will provide all weather connectivity to this place. This all weather connectivity will include um, passage of military vehicles, before guns, etc. Now, is this a single tunnel? No, I have placed an image here right here. There are two tunnels, tunnel one and tunnel two. Tunnel two will have... Uh, so tunnel one will be bilane and it will be one one tunnel. But tunnel two will have two tubes, one tube for bilane movement and other for emergency movement. Both of them will be operational. Now there will be an approach road also. It will be around 1.2 kilometers long and the first tunnel around one kilometer and the second tunnel, tunnel around 1500 meters long. The total length of this project will be around 12 kilometers because there will also be an approach road to this place. See, we all we already have a Sela Pass. But the issue with the pass is that during winter times when there's a lot of snowfall, this is the pass which gets closed. So we want to provide all weather connectivity. See, have a look at Sela Lake also right here. So this is the main idea to provide good connectivity to this place. All right. Hmm. What else about this place? Uh, that's it. Uh, end, uh, almost end stages of uh, construction. And uh, this particular tunnel has been uh, created with rock behavior, studying the rock behavior. What is the behavior of rock at various places? And that, that's how the blast were uh, created. Uh, the, the blast were done. Now, 2019, the Prime Minister inaugurated this project. In 2022, it is going to get finished. So, great uh, movement on this project. All right. Palm oil. Palm oil crisis to get reduced because Indonesia has said we will start to resupply for the international uh, folks as well. We, they had controlled the supply earlier. See, 60% of the edible oil that we consume, we import from abroad. The five edible oils which are very popular are groundnut. Groundnut. All right. Groundnut. The second one is uh, uh, the 
uh, uh, the mustard oil that we you know the the dil wale diluniya le jayenge fields those the third is uh, the sunflower oil which we import from russia and ukraine region the fourth is soya bean oil that we import from south america argentina and brazil and the fifth is the one important replacement that we have had palm oil now all these three imports have had some strains we know that palm oil has had some strain because in malaysia there was labor crisis and malaysia and indonesia have been important regions for export of this oil so since the price rose in southeast asia there was hoarding in indonesia and the prices rose and this is where government said oh let's not export it for now they also rationed this they also said to exporters you will control the prices uh, for domestic supplies and later on they also curbed the exports completely altogether which india opposed now they have restarted there was another reason why they would do this is because they wanted to produce green diesel in their country all right so these were the causes now the prices of um, uh, palm oil are also linked to prices of many end products like cosmetics processed food cakes bakery products shampoo biofuel etc because they are used in those products as well so good that in these prices uh, oil prices will, uh, will will be low all right so that is a great development uh, malcolin convention also called as the convention or uh, interpol's match fixing task force now this task force is called as malcolin convention because it first met in malcolin in switzerland right that is where they finalized this and this was this was back in 2014 that's when they finalized 2019 this uh, got initiated and the idea is to combat uh you know any kind of manipulation in sports uh, competitions max match fixing which is against the ethical principles of any sports so what they discussed was intelligence gathering and uh, looking at the means in which uh, people are uh, you know people are taken in these kind of match fixing projects so grooming the young players right from the beginning or doping scandals they also provide an insight into match fixing all these things were discussed india was also a participant cbi was also a participant in this interpol meet all right they also discussed how to use Use emerging technologies, big data, social media, all those things to be able to uh, counter these kind of issues. Then we have Amritsar Jamnagar uh, Greenfield cor Corridor. Now this is a very important corridor which provides a transit to all the industrial goods and agricultural goods from Punjab to Jamnagar. Now Jamnagar also will provide an uh, a route for exporting the products. So a very important uh, route, and this is spanning four states: Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, and Gujarat. Total twenty twelve hundred kilometers plus, and the idea is to be able to connect all the agricultural and industrial destinations on the way. for uh, domestic and international supplies all right we will be initiating with this uh, project very soon navdoot a new engine which is dual mode dual mode engine has been um, uh, manufactured by indian railways and this ra this particular engine will run on both battery technologies and electric techno technologies the place where electricity is not available it will run on battery technologies it can be used for shunting for example the the locomotives the wagons have to be moved from one place to another it can be moved from that uh, particular uh, you know uh, cause and if it wants to carry the wagons attached to it 18 wagons can be carry can be carried by it at a speed of 30 km per hour not bad but then if it is running at full speed it is 100 km at least that's a good that's a good thing good development the next one is uh, suposhit ma abhiyan now see this abhiyan got started uh, around 2020 itself but it has been released in quota by the speaker of the lok sabha mr om birla and uh, the pro the program will sub give nutritional support to pregnant mothers and girls both of them why because those are the ones who would later become newly new mothers and uh, their children malnutrition will be related to the malnutrition of the mother so their health checkup both of there not only the ladies but children health checkup is linked along with that delivery of the child medical examination provision of food all of this will be linked the idea is to create a suposhit bharat by the year 2022 let's see all right agro tourism in news this is the case study for today and this case study is on uh, uh, agro tourism from rajasthan jaipur to be specific where green world foundation has initiated people's project they want to create and show sustainable farming methods animal husbandry to all the tourists arriving to those destinations and making them live in uh, the traditional huts the mud homes and i have actually felt living in the mud homes there is a lesser uh, tendency of uh, uh, the internal heating of the rooms organic farming integrated farming all this will be shown now people will not only be able to earn the people who are witnessing this they will also be able to change accordingly learn the best practices of our uh, indian tradition i have also showed the 
pictures of two places. This is uh, Turtuk Valley of Ladakh and the other is uh, Mavni Long in Meghalaya. Both these places are popular for tourism and in fact agro-tourism where now in the first place people would, the locals would provide the healthy food which has been cooked organically and they would provide food immediately to you. So this is a great way for agri-tourism and Mavni Long is declared as one of the best uh, uh, villages in Asia. So because of cleanliness and integrated uh, facilities being utilized here. Now these are the ways we can learn how agro-tourism can actually benefit India's economy and ecology. This is a great initiative. Uh, now, so is ours for current affairs. If you have some questions, put it down in the comment section. And if you got some uh, uh, thing to share, please place it down as well. And in case you like this initiative, share some love through likes, comments, and shares. Thank you for watching.